a reaction to that. Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State and CIA director, now Fox News contributor. Iran has a $1 million bounty on his head. Uh, and the Biden administration just renewed your security protection, uh, Secretary Pompeo, in January. So obviously, all of this hits close to home. What do you make of the word of this imminent strike? Well, Martha, it's great to be with you. I, I think what we can see is the risk is pretty significant. It sounds like they have pretty specific intelligence about a relatively imminent attack. They may know more than they've even let on about both timing and the nature of that attack. I, I haven't seen the intelligence, obviously. Uh, but, you know, Martha, as a policy matter, what I think this suggests is we just, we've lost the bubble. We've lost deterrence, right? The Iranians have already attacked Israel once on October 7th through their proxy Hamas. They're continuing to fire on American interests in the region now over 100 times since October 7th. And so what we're talking about in the next 24 or 48 hours is just a continuation of a failed policy to actually protect Israel. And so when I hear President Biden say he's prepared to defend them, you know, last week he told them they couldn't continue to destroy Hamas. And so uh, they've really told the Iranians this is green light. Even, even his statements today, which says, what's your, what's your response? It's don't. Well, he said don't multiple times, mm -hmm. and don't isn't a national security policy. It's not even a deterrent. Uh, this is, frankly, don't from President Biden suggests uh, don't do anything that would draw us in, and then mm -hmm. we'll accept it. Uh, this is really dangerous stuff, Martha. Yeah, I, I mean, my mind goes back to the minor incursion in Ukraine. Yeah, same, uh, that same was idea. the warning mm -hmm. at that time, right? Um, and, and I find it very interesting, this reporting from Axios, that Iran sent a message to President Biden through several Arab countries this week, warning, if the U.S. gets involved, U.S. forces will be attacked. Um, and they, they use some colorful language to say, basically, don't mess with us and we won't mess with you. And this builds on the White House saying, after the Damascus attack, we had nothing to do with that, right? And, and the people who were taken out are people who want to take out U.S. forces in the Middle East. We could have said nothing, or we could have said something supportive. It looks like our posture is very, very, very careful uh, with Iran and what we say and do. Uh, very careful, and Martha evinces weakness and fearfulness uh, your, your point's exactly right. It does sound like the minor incursion language with, in Afghanistan, and we know how that ended. And we shouldn't forget, when, he's, when the Iranians say, well, you stay out of this, we'll, we'll leave you out, they've not left us out. They fired at Americans. We've had folks killed working in the Red Sea. We have Americans held hostage inside of Gaza today. I pray that they're still alive. But those are Americans being held by Iranians. They, they haven't left us out of this. And you, you can't leave the United States out when you're attacking our friend and ally in Israel. And so the fact that we've lost this capacity to deter, that we let the Iranians even make statements and leak statements saying, hey, we've told, we've told the Americans to stay out of this, that, that events is a weakness that is a green light for a regime that has made very clear their intention to destroy the little Satan in Israel and the great Satan in America. So what's different? After the Qasem Soleimani hit, there was a pause. Everyone expected a, a severe retaliation for that hit. It came in the form of a, of a missile strike and no Americans were killed, thankfully, but there were Americans who had um, some brain injuries as a result of that. Overall, it was seen as, as, I guess, not as forceful as it could have been. What has changed now, and what kind of strike do you expect we're going to see here? Well, let me take the second one first, Martha. I don't know the nature of the strike. It won't surprise me if it's a strike that has some level of ambiguity so that the Iranians won't unite the whole world against them. So think maybe it could be a cyber strike, could be a strike through a proxy, could be some mechanism by which the Iranian hand won't be completely seen. On the other hand, they may just decide to come over the top and launch missiles directly from Iran into an Israeli asset somewhere in the world. Um, second, you, you asked what changed. What changed was American leadership. Uh, there was no doubt that the United States stood with Israel. President Trump didn't have to go out every day and say, hey, where were the Israelis? Where were the Israelis? They could see it in our actions, right? Recognition of the rightful homeland of the Jewish capital, the movement, uh, the, acknowledging the God, that uh, the Golan Heights were part of Israel. All, all the work that we had done made very clear where America stood. And when you're out having to just reiterate in the time of crisis that you're with an ally, that suggests somehow that in the minds of the Gulf Arab states, uh, frankly, probably in the Israeli leadership minds and certainly in the minds of the Ayatollah, mind of the Ayatollah, they are very worried if America will walk away if it's not an American interest that is harmed in this strike. So if Iran is sensing wobbliness, 
are, how, how emboldened are they? Maybe they see this as a moment where they do want to go further than they may have gone in the past. They don't want there to be an Israel. This is a, this is a very real risk. Uh, you know this, Martha. We've talked about this. Getting deterrence back once you've lost it is incredibly difficult, and it requires resolve. And you can't at every turn be talking about the fact that you're fearful of escalation. When you, when you begin to talk about, well, we're not going to do anything to the Iranians. We're out of this game. Uh, they view that as a green light. And so you're right. Continued aggression. Think about the fact that we've told Israel, hey, you have to be way more careful when, in fact, we know the Israelis are fighting in a way that is as careful as combat can be conducted. Those are the kind of things that uh, the perception from the Iranians grows, that they can move about the cabin freely, and the risk to the United States continues to increase as well, as with a wide open southern border, who knows who the Iranians may have moved inside of our country as well. Just very quickly, you know, I'm just thinking about our U.S. service men and women on the ground in these areas who are always under threat by Iranian proxies. How do you think they read that when they hear the president say, or the White House convey, um, you know, we don't have anything to do with this. We're not in the middle of this. We're backing off, essentially. You know, if it were my, one of my family members or someone that, um, that I loved and I heard a president say, we're not in this, but I knew my, my son or my daughter was actually in it, mm -hmm. uh, stationed somewhere in the Middle East or on a ship out in one of the seas, uh, I, would, I would be both troubled and concerned that the commander in chief wasn't doing everything he needed to do to deter the Iranians from coming after my son, my daughter, my cousin, my brother, my family member. It's a, it's a real risk, Martha, that I think every service member can see. And I'm happy that General Kirilla is on the ground in Israel coordinating with the Israelis. I think that's a good thing for the mm -hmm. Biden administration to have done. But man, I fear it may just be way too late and that weakness has already been demonstrated. Let's hope not. Uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Fox News contributor. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you very much for joining yes, me today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Martha. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.